Hello, everybody. Gary and Mike again with Pivotal Advisors. And we are continuing our Real Talk series for sales leadership. And today we're going to be talking about something most of us have never had to face before. And this is how do we re-engage customers face-to-face? -face? So uh, I've never had that question come up before. What do I do when I have to go talk to people in person again? Very different. Uh, Mike and I talked about that. We're hearing this more and more all the time. People are starting to go back to the office. Our salespeople might need to be back out in the field talking to their people. So what do we do about that? And we dropped it into really three buckets. One of them is about keeping people safe. One is really about how do you set up those meetings? The last one's really about making sure that's a great meeting. What's the content or purpose of that? So Mike, let, let's start on bucket number one here. When you talk about keeping people safe, what, what, what comes to mind for you? Yeah, and I, I think there's a few things. I think I think one is if a customer saying that uh, they want you to come in, or if your sales people are calling and trying to make that appointment, I think there's a handful of questions you got to ask up front. You have to ask, do they have a protocol for being safe and social distancing? Are people wearing masks? Is there a safe place that we can set up the meeting? Who should all be in the meeting? You know, if there's going to if there needs to be ten people in the meeting, we're probably not going to be able to social distance. So. You know, what is that environment that I'm going into? And I think it's very fair of our salespeople to ask the question. I'm more than happy to come in, but how am I going to be safe coming in? And then I think the second question uh, around it is, um, what if what if the salespeople aren't comfortable? What if you have somebody on your team say, hey, I don't know if I'm comfortable. I appreciate XYZ companies open, but I don't want to go. Or maybe I'm in an age group or I have compromised health or I'm just worried in general. Uh, and, and what do you do about that? So I, I'll, I'll even turn that back to you, but the theory is, what would you say to the salesperson who says I'm not comfortable? I don't ever want to put them in a situation where they're uncomfortable. If they truly and honestly don't feel like they can be safe in an environment, like right now we got a lot of meat processing plants that are banning people and everything else. That if I told my person, you got to make a call on them, they might not be feeling too, too warm and fuzzy about that. So probably don't want to force them to do anything at all that's out of their comfort zone. But at the same time, Mike, you got to balance it a little bit with performance if that's part of the job. So I don't know, that was my answer. What, what do you say if uh, it's part of the job and they got to do it to be performing? Yeah, absolutely agree. If it's part of the job that we go out, we have to do it. We certainly don't want to send them into an area where it's a hot spot or we've got lots of cases there, but maybe that's even another question is, have you had any cases on your site? Are there any known things? Because I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to bring it. And we probably ought to be prepared as salespeople to say, you know, we, we've kept, checked our temperatures. We've done our things. We've, we've kept social distance. So we're not bringing anything into their clients. But more than anything, it begs the conversation. So I think the part about being safe is it begs the conversation. I think then you move on to the second part of what you talked about. Well, one more thing on that one, Mike, if I could. It's, you know, a lot of companies right now are developing their own policies for what to do in the office. Um, let's not leave this up to our salespeople to, Agree. You know, which questions to ask. Let's come up with a checklist. You know, ask if they have a policy. A ask if they've had any outbreaks there. Ask if there's a safe place to have our meeting or how many people are going to be there. But don't leave it to them to know to ask these things. Let's come up with our own checklist before we go there. I think um, that's great, Gary. Let's, uh, this is where we give direction. Again, we have to be able to do that. And then, and then next, we're going to go have this meeting. So um, when we're going to be there on site, what are your best practices for that actual engagement when we're there? Yeah, I think before I get into the meeting specifics, just again, it's a, a little bit of a logistic thing we haven't really had to deal with before. But, you know, wear your mask coming in there. And, you know, as employers, let's make sure we give them a mask, right? Don't leave it up to them again. This should be part of the policy anyway. But make sure they have a good mask. I've even had clever people say, wear branded masks, right? I don't even know if you can get those. <laughs> That's kind of a fun idea that came out. But wear your mask, make sure you're in a room where we can keep, you know, six feet apart, make sure you've got hand sanitizer with you. So go in prepared to be a safe person and to set up to have the meeting. If there's technology that has to be used because you're presenting something or there's um, samples of some sort that you're bringing, uh, make sure that they're wiped down and that if people are going to touch them, that we've done all those things. So I think it's, it's the same general directions. But be bold, and again, I like your checklist idea, be bold to say when you arrive at the meeting, it's okay to tell the customer, hey, where are we going to be? And I have to, you know, I have to take three minutes to 
wipe everything down and you know get a mask on and wash my hands and like let's not do our normal shaking hands and do all those kinds of uh, traditions are out but I, I think just being transparent about that right at the beginning of the meeting will let you set up the environment you're going to be in if you're going to go back and walk a plant floor we have some people do that or you're going to be in an area then wear your mask and be safe and, and uh, um, keep yourself in a good position yeah, a couple of things I like what you said there is, uh, you know, know what their protocol is. I, I like arming your salespeople, if that's what you're doing with them, with sanitizer, with wipes, with whatever. They're going to need it. They're going to be out talking to people and, and providing them with masks. That's good. And, and know your customer's protocol. So those are really smart things. Make sure you're set up and, and give them the direction so they know what to do. I like the checklist idea again. Finally, my uh, people are getting pretty used to having meetings just like we're having right now and doing social distancing. So there is a lot that you can do over the phone to prep for these meetings and whatnot. Sometimes, as you said, you've got to walk a plant floor. you got to do different things like that. you got to be face-to-face. -face. Um, so how does this change our process for the content of these meetings or what do we do before, during, and after those meetings? Well, and, and I want your opinion on this too, but I think if you go back a little bit, you can go back and forth though, and I think this is a great opportunity. Um, First of all, you got to ask yourself, do I really need the face-to-face? -face? I mean, people have been cooped up. I think salespeople are going to want to jump in their cars and start driving and jump on airplanes because that's what we've done for the last, you know, X amount of years. And this is our protocol and we're excited to do it. But, you know, maybe we're learning something here about what we really need to be face-to-face -face for. And I think it's a great opportunity to ask, what can I get done more efficiently using video technology or using the telephone um, to to move the ball forward before I have to be there. And then when I do have to be there to be really specific about that purpose, yep. right? What am I there to do and being clear about a next step? And I think it also gives us a opportunity to dictate the process a little. Like if I'm gonna, if I'm gonna come out there as a salesperson and I'm, I, I could be putting myself at a health risk, let's make sure this is a valuable meeting. So can we get the right people there? You know, can we get the right timing there? Let's make sure we have an agenda. Let's do we make sure we have a homework and let's make sure we have a clear step, which I would argue is a good sales call anyway. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> right? That's not necessarily special, but I think it gives us a better opportunity to do more of that and to be really clear and to set an expectation with the client. What other things are you thinking? No, I being super purposeful on the call. So you're not just showing up to check in. How's it going? Schmooze. There's always some report building and everything else, but do what you can ahead of time in terms of research, have a plan for your call. So when you are there, we're making really good use of our time there and we're minimizing the time we have to be there. And then with any good sales call, you got a clear next step. And what are we going to do next? And is that going to be face-to-face? -face? Can we set that up over the phone? But it's, as you said, really good practices anyway for any sales call. This is forcing us to be a little bit more purposeful and, and do the things that we can over the phone before we get to face-to-face. -face. Yeah, and, and I think here it goes right into kind of the qualifying part of that, right? And, and I'm not just saying qualifying the account, but really the meeting. Like if we're gonna do this, let's get together. Let's, let's make sure we know what questions we get, need to get answered so that we set the meeting up right, that we have the right people in the room and that we have clear decisions we're gonna make going forward. Right. I mean, that is great setup, like, like you said, anyway, but I think if it's questions and decisions so that at the end of this, did we accomplish our question? Are we ready to make a decision? And a decision can be a next step or a next meeting. It doesn't have to be in order, right? It's whatever your next commitment is, but a really good chance to be super clear about that so that you not only keep yourself safe, but you have a really, really productive meeting. Yeah. So hopefully this gives you some, some idea. Don't leave it up to your salesperson. Give some direction here. They are they are needing direction more than ever right now. Give them direction about what your expectations are. Um, give them the, the face mask. Give them the sanitizer. Give them the checklist, those different types of things. And then observe them and see how they do. And, and if they're doing the right thing, recognize that. If they're not, make some adjustments. But uh, it's a different world. It's a different process. It's different in everything. So uh, they need you. They need, they need some direction from you on, on what you expect. So this was our, our short talk on how do we re-engage customers, part of a real talk series. We'll keep cranking these out and we're all gonna get through this together. So stay safe.